Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. Welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, skin health issues, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to my blog, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off the website. You can also call 866-735-2470 if you'd like to talk to someone. 866-735-2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. And if you would like to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth 5% Retinol Gel, if you're dealing with acne blemishes or hyperpigmentation dark spots, if you just want to prevent the formation or even reverse the formation of wrinkles or any of the other signs of accelerated aging, thinning skin, crepey skin, you want to use retinol, and you want, to, you want to make sure you're using enough retinol, and that's why I developed my Truth 5% Retinol Gel. It's got the most retinol of any product you will ever find over the counter. It, I formulated it to be equipotent, to have the, so, the same potency as retinoic acid 0.05%. Of course, you don't get any of the preservatives or fragrances or fillers or waxes or emulsifiers or water or other useless ingredients that you get in other skin health products. You only get vitamin C and vitamin A and my transdermal delivery matrix, and that's it. Likewise with our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, only active and functional ingredients, never any ingredients that your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay. Continuing on with our PPD, youth and fertility hormones, whose levels are upregulated by good nutrition, by the mighty 90 essential nutrients, calorie restriction. Yes, calorie restriction upregulates youth and fertility hormones. How cool is that? All you got to do is stop eating and your youth and fertility hormones go up. Even if you eat less, your youth and fertility hormones go up. Relaxation, of course, will stimulate youth and fertility hormones. Brief, intense exercise will also do it. The combination of brief, intense bursts of exercise in combination with long periods of rest and relaxation are a wonderful strategy for increasing, upregulating youth and fertility hormones. And the ketogenic diet. We have not forgotten to talk about the ketogenic diet. I will be addressing that. That's how we started this whole discussion several months ago about the PPD hormones was we were talking about the ketogenic diet and I'm not done talking about the ketogenic diet. longevity has got a couple of new products out, Keto FX Bar, Keto FX Shake, which I got to talk about uh, this past weekend in Boise, Boise, Idaho. Really cool town, by the way. I was surprised. Anyway, the ketogenic diet is a great way to upregulate your PPD hormones. There's a couple other things about the ketogenic, well, there's a few other things about the ketogenic diet that I'm gonna be talking about as soon as we're done discussing DHEA here in the next day or two. 
Bottom line is, it wouldn't be incorrect to say that all of these strategies, calorie restriction, adequate nutrition, the Cron diet, that's calorie restriction, optimum nutrition, or the Cran diet, calorie restriction, adequate nutrition, relaxation, brief intense exercise, the ketogenic diet, it wouldn't be incorrect to say that all of these strategies, which we know are healthful, beneficial, anti-aging, longevity promoting, it wouldn't be incorrect to say that these strategies deliver their anti-aging benefits because they increase the levels of the PPD hormones. You also want to make sure that you're processing fats. Fats act as the raw material for the PPD hormones, which is why I'm probably preaching to the choir if you're listening to this program, but uh, why anybody who thinks that a low-fat diet is a good thing doesn't understand biochemistry, particularly the biochemistry of the PPD hormones. The P uh, uh, fats, saturated fat especially, acts as raw material, building blocks, basic ingredients for the manufacture of the PPD hormones. Of course, you got to make sure you're processing your fats. That means you got to make sure your liver is working correctly, the intestine, the gallbladder, the stomach, the pancreas. You're secreting enough pancreatic juices. You're making enough digestive enzymes. You can, of course, support all of this with apple cider vinegar and the, uh, your ultimate enzymes from longevity. You can take extra pancreatic enzymes. You can get something called betaine HCL or pepsin HCL. You'll get that in the you'll get the betaine HCL in your in your ultimate enzymes from longevity. Probiotics are also important. Good bacteria for helping the body process fats. All the steroid hormones, whether we're talking testosterone or estrogen, the PPD hormones, or cortisol, they're all derived from fats. And those fats are derived from fats and food. As I say, particularly saturated fats. One of the most significant roles for these youth-promoting hormones. One of the most important benefits for people who are taking the youth-promoting youth hormones, whether you're taking them orally or whether you're using them topically, is balancing out or antagonizing the effects of cortisol, stress hormone. Cortisol secretion, excessive cortisol secretion, long-term chronic cortisol secretion, as in long-term chronic stress, whether that stress is emotional or mental. When we hear the word stress, I get the idea that most people think of emotional stress and mental stress. Those are certainly significant. No one is marginalizing, uh, no one is marginalizing or, or making psychological stress not important. However, it's also important, it's equally important to recognize that cortisol goes up when we're under physical stress, physiologic stress. When our blood sugar is messed up, cortisol secretion will go up. This is how the second point on the triangle of disease becomes the third point or leads into the third point on the triangle of disease. The triangle of disease, the three points of disease that underlie every other health challenge, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. These are the three points that break down in the body, digestion, blood sugar, uh, uh, blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid length, these three points underlie all health challenges. And point number two, blood sugar, becomes point number three, adrenal distress and, and uh, uh, hypothyroidism, because the stress system has to take over when we're not processing sugar correctly. Just like the blood sugar system has to take over when we're not getting enough energy from our foods, that's how point number one becomes point number two. Point number two becomes point number three when the adrenal glands have to take over because we're hypoglycemic or we're hyperglycemic. We're going up and down in blood sugar. So cortisol, excessive secretion in cortisol, is linked to the first two points in the triangle of disease as much as it is linked to psychology and uh, lousy thinking and lousy, lousy emotions. In any case, long-term excessive secretion of cortisol is associated with everything we hate about being alive. Uh, uh, a, uh, anxiety, insomnia, lack of sexuality or, or lack of libido, weight gain, accelerated aging, thinning skin, chronic cortisol secretion is also linked to the misery of autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases affect one out of 12 or one out of 11 Americans. That's crazy, folks. How does 10% of a population, over 10% of a population suffer from this absolutely awful and, and really bizarre health challenge of autoimmunity? I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a break and come back right after this. Don't go away. We are back on the 
Bright Side Farm Spen here. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you've got questions about the longevity products, the true skin health products, something you may have heard about or read about, formulations, ingredients, or if you just have a success story you'd like to share, or if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products or joining the Bright Side Ben team, go to my blog at pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or brightsideben.com. Okay, so we're talking about cortisol and DHEA. DHEA balances out cortisol. Cortisol, uh, uh, cortisol levels fluctuate. They, they can be either high or they can be low if you're dealing with uh, an autoimmune disease. Some, there's, kind, there's some interesting reasons for that. When the body is in duress, cortisol is one of the ways the body handles that duress, and autoimmunity is a major, a major duress issue. On the other hand, sometimes autoimmune patients will be low cortisol. They'll be running out of cortisol. On the other hand, if you have a third hand, on the third hand, cortisol levels can go up when we become resistant to cortisol from long-term secretion. Without getting into the specifics, just think cortisol is messed up when you're dealing with an autoimmune disease. You could have low, it could be high. It's just messed up. This is where DHEA comes in. DHEA helps balance out cortisol, cortisol secretion. Sometimes the doctor will prescribe cortisol as a drug. It's called prednisone. That's what prednisone is. Prednisone is stress hormone. You say, well, why am I getting, why is my doctor giving me stress hormone? Well, you need stress hormone. If you're low stress hormone, you're not going to be able to respond to stress. On the other hand, because cortisol, because cortisol uh, has uh, anti-inflammatory effects, using prednisone acts as a great anti-inflammatory. Doctors love anti-inflammatories, and so do patients. It's not all the doctor's fault. Patients love anti-inflammatories too. You know, the inflammatory system is a defensive system. It's not necessarily a great idea to suppress your defensive system. That's the problem with anti-inflammatory drugs, even something as seemingly benign as aspirin or Motrin. You're suppressing the body's primary, one of the body's primary defensive strategies, which is inflammation. Prednisone is a powerful, powerful anti-inflammatory. Motrin can't touch prednisone as an anti-inflammatory. But all the crappy, age-inducing, fat-depositing, wrinkle-promoting effects of long-term uh, cortisol secretion also apply to prednisone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when your immune system is suppressed for a long period of time, guess what? You're more prone. You're more likely to get an autoimmune disease. When your immune system is suppressed, the not only is the immune system suppressed, but the brakes on the immune system, the immune system has brakes on it, just like your car has brakes. The immune system has brakes on it to keep it from going crazy. Well, when we suppress the immune system, the braking system is also suppressed. So suppressing the immune system can actually result in weird autoimmune problems via this suppression of the braking system. This is why you don't want to be messing around with drugs. It's, you can't control everything. God controls it. The divine force controls it. The body controls it. But when you try to control one aspect of the body or one aspect of the biochemistry with a drug, there's something else that's going to get messed up. That's, what, that's the fundamental problem with the pharmacomedical model. You can't target a specific system. You cannot target a specific system. You will always get other effects, i.e. side effects. So what a side effect is. It's just the result of not being able to target specific systems. They, they're a little better at it now than they used to be, but they still can't do it because there's too many specific systems. It, the web is too intricate. You cannot just target one aspect of a web without affecting the whole thing. It's not possible. And this is the major issue with something as huge as prednisone. Prednisone isn't just like putting a little pinprick on a web, in the web. It's not like throwing a pebble at the web. It's like putting a boulder in the web. You get all kinds of side problems, and that's why in pharmacy school they tell you it, one of the first things you learn in pharmacy school is nobody should ever stay on prednisone long term. Yet we know that there are lots of people on prednisone long term. If you are taking prednisone, you might want to consider a DHEA supplement, a daily DHEA supplement. It will balance out some of the untoward effects of the prednisone. Cortisol's primary role, by the way, is on the immune system. That's its main role. 
I hate to say its main role but, uh, because there's so many things it does, but it's certainly one of its main roles. When cortisol goes up, the immune system's activity is suppressed. When cortisol goes up, inflammation, which is the calling card, the manifestation of the immune system, is suppressed. That's why pharmaceutical cortisol, prednisone, is used to deal with immune problems. It suppresses the immune system, which doctors love doing. A second important role for cortisol is on the digestive system, which is not surprising because the immune system is located in the digestive system. Again, we're talking about the PPD hormone. So when you think about cortisol, you think you should also think about prednisone, or I'm sorry, pregnenolone, uh, progesterone, and DHEA. When you're thinking about cortisol, you want to think about your PPD hormones because they can balance out some of the effects of cortisol, whether we're talking aging effects or fat uh, effect of, um, uh, fat deposition, or whether we're talking the immune effects. Everything that cortisol does, DHEA, pregnenolone, and progesterone balance out. Cortisol's uh, uh, main effect is on the main role, or one of its main roles is on the immune system. A second main role is on the digestive system, which should come as no surprise because the immune system is housed largely in the digestive system. If you turn this radio program off now and never listen to the bright side ever again, but you get that one point that the immune system equals the digestive system functionally, then you've gotten 90% of what we talk about on this program. That's what it really means. That's what I, when we always return back to the digestive system for everything. The major reason th th that the digestive system is at the core of all of this is because this is where the defense system lives. It's the headquarters. Yes, you have satellites in the skin. You've got satellites in the blood. You've got satellites scattered throughout the body. Th those are like outposts. But Rome is in the digestive tract. You know, in the Roman Empire, they had all kinds of outposts. They had one in Germany and they'd, or in Bohemia or whatever they used to call that, uh, that part of the world. They had one in Gaul, which is France. They had one in Britain. They had all these outposts in the Middle East. But Rome headquarters was in, was in Italy or whatever they called it at the time. It's likewise with the digestive system. Headquarters is in the digestive tract. The immune system headquarters is in the digestive tract. There's satellites everywhere, but the immune system is housed in the digestive tract. So it should come as no surprise that when cortisol goes up and the immune system is suppressed, so is digestion. Cortisol controls the digestive system because digestion is relatively unimportant when our survival is at stake. Cortisol secretion will result in a reduction in the secretion of hydrochloric acid from the digestive, from the stomach. Salivary secretions will become dried up. This is one of the ways the body deals with stress. It dries us up inside. It dries up fluids. Dry eyes, for example, classic example of how the body dries up when it's in, under duress. Dry saliva, dry mouth. If you're not, uh, if, if your uh, cortisol is long-term elevated, you won't be making digestive acids, hydrochloric acid. You won't be making digestive enzymes as effectively. You won't be secreting bile as effectively. The whole digestive system will shut down under long-term cortisol secretion. But here's where it really gets awful, is because that's the third point on our triangle of disease. The digestive system is our first point on the triangle of disease, and a vicious cycle thereby ensues as the third point meets the first point, as the snake meets, as the tail of the snake meets the head of the snake. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a break and come back right now. Back on The Bright Side. Got a lot of lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you in a minute. 844-236-6010 is our number on The Bright Side. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program or you're dealing with a very frustrating health challenge, and you want to cut to the chase and figure out how this whole thing works, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel or Truth Serum or Truth Balm or Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, you want to check out truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Truth, truth and if you're interested in joining the Brightside Ben team, please call 866-735-2470 or head over to... Uh, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and sign up right off the website and you can purchase products right off the website as well. Okay, the PPD hormones, cortisol, cortisol stress hormones, the effects of cortisol are all, all over the board really, but if it's lousy, it probably involves cortisol, at least in the long term. The body's got two ways of operating. It's got an emergency way of operating and it's got a, a thrival way of operating. We're meant to thrive. The body is designed to thrive. 
not just survive. Yes, there is an emergency survival system, but it's only supposed to be activated very rarely. For the most part, we're supposed to be in thrival chemistry, and it turns out that the chemicals, the molecules, the biochemistry of thrival is associated with all the things we love about being alive. And we've been talking about the PPD hormones, but there's others too. Vitamin D, one, almost every day you read another study about vitamin D, another article about vitamin D, another reason why vitamin D is good for us. Well, if you want to really just get to the bottom line about vitamin D, vitamin D is a summertime vitamin. It's a sunshine vitamin. Vitamin D, which is extremely similar to the PPD hormones, and, it, and by the way, vitamin D is essentially cholesterol. Do you know that? Vitamin D is essentially cholesterol. It's basically, it's almost exactly the same thing as cholesterol. Tell that to the next boneheaded medical professional who talks, tells you about good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Tell that to the next boneheaded medical professional who tells you that you gotta suppress the production of cholesterol. Cholesterol, like vitamin D, like the PPD hormones, are here to help us, it is here to help us thrive. It's a thrival biomolecule. It's found in foods that are only available, i.e. meats, Cholesterol is found in foods that are available, and vitamin D and vitamin A are found in all of which are feel good. They're found in foods that are available in the summertime. And from an evolutionary perspective, the summertime was the good time. The wintertime was the time we had to shut everything down. The summertime was when we were thriving. Vitamin D is a summertime vitamin. It's a sunshine vitamin. It's a good times vitamin. The PPD hormones are good times hormones, feel good hormones. They tell the body it's okay to grow. Cholesterol, good time substance. Tells the body it's time to heal, time to grow, time to think, time to make more brain cells. Oh yeah, let's shut that down. Let's take a drug to suppress, uh, to suppress cholesterol, the mother of all feel good hormones. I'm telling you, if you want to pick a strategy or design a strategy to destroy a culture, you couldn't do much better than to tell that culture or to poison that culture's cholesterol manufacturing system. It is a recipe for biochemical disaster, statin drugs are. And anyone who has a, a iota of understanding about how this whole thing works, how steroid chemistry works and what steroid chemistry's purpose is, would never even smell or sniff a statin drug. Now, I'm not beating anybody up who's a patient because it's not your job to understand, although really we should be understanding our biochemistry, but we, we trust our medical professionals to understand biochemistry. They don't. If they gave you a statin drug, they don't know how the body works. They're just looking at statistics. Remember the three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. Statistics can, mean, can be made to say anything, and drug studies, by the way, are not honest for the most part. Drugs, the way drugs, drug companies uh, release studies to the public and to the FDA when they want drugs approved is so scandalous and so deceitful. That's a whole other story, and I, I don't want to get into that, but just understand that because a drug company or a doctor tells you that this thing works doesn't mean it's a good, necessarily good for your body. What they mean is it works on numbers, not on your body. Anyway. Vitamin D is a feel-good substance. And, and by the way, arginine is a feel-good substance too. Branched-chain amino acids are feel-good substances too. There are proteins that are feel-good substances, substances too. That's not just the steroids. Carbohydrates in general, aside from a tiny little bit of them, they don't qualify. A little bit does. You need a little bit. Very little bit. Fasting is a feel-good strategy. How do you like that? Fasting is, the, is a feel-good strategy, just like vitamin D is, just like arginine and BCAAs are. And it's no surprise that fasting increases levels of DHEA, pregnenolone, and progesterone, because fasting is part of feel-good. You say, well, what is that? Why is fasting part of feel-good? It's really cool. Why? Because the body, in its infinite wisdom, the divine force in its infinite wisdom, knows that when we're starving, we better get some feel-good chemistry going, or we're going to drop dead. So when, we, when the body thinks starvation is, is kicking in, at least in the very short term, not in the long term, but in the short term, that's why you only fast for a shorter, you know, you don't fast for two months, although some people have fasted that long, but typically a fast is a day or two or three. Under conditions of a day or two or three of calorie restriction or calorie deprivation, feel-good chemistry kicks in because the body knows, hey, we better get this, uh, we better start to feeling good so we can go out and find some food. That's why muscle growth improves under conditions of fasting. That's why bone strength improves under conditions of fasting. 
That's why all the markers of health and anti-aging improve under conditions of fasting because the body feels like, hey, we got to get this, this being of ours, this organism of ours, uh, moving so we can find some food. So we're leveraging or we're taking advantage of that system. From the journal Arthritis, uh, May issue of the journal Arthritis and Rheumatology, glucocorticoid use, that is prednisone, ups diabetes risk in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, surprise, surprise. You take your prednisone for, uh, uh, for your rheumatoid or whatever your autoimmune disease is, and you get diabetes. <laughs> That's the way these things work. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Toronto and welcome Mark to the bright side. Good morning, Mark. What's up, man? Thank you, Ben. Uh, my daughter's had persistent headaches for about a month, and she wants me to take her to the doctor. Okay. Uh, no, well, that's understandable. How old's your daughter? She's 18. Okay, so she's she's still in, in the miasma, the medical miasma, that says that you go to the doctor when you have a headache. What, what is the doctor going to do, really, logically speaking? There's nothing he's going to do. Give her a pill. Give her maybe a steroid, for that matter. Here's the deal. Headaches are, a, are not a head problem. They're a circulation problem. Does that make sense so far? For the most part. I mean, if you, had, you could have a, a tumor or a mechanical injury of some kind. But for the most part, you're looking at a vascular or circulatory issue, blood, blood issue. Okay? There's two things that affect the blood. One thing, really, but, but one is a derivative of, of the other. The two major factors that affect the blood are hormones and food. Now, there's also the psychological components. I'm not going to get into that. But from a physiological uh, perspective, you're looking at foods and you're looking at hormones. So how, uh, how do we figure this thing out? Uh, has she noticed that they're related to her menstrual cycle, first and foremost? I'm going to, she's right here. I'm going to let you ask her directly. Yeah, why don't you put her on? Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi there. I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. What's your name, sweetheart? Uh, Serena. Serena. I need, I, we got to take a break and I'll get you when we come back. But if you could, uh, if you could speak into the phone or, or get me on speakerphone or whatever it is, I'm having a hard time hearing you. So we'll be back right after this. Don't go away. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll take a break and come right back. Don't go away. On the right side, 844-236-6010, is our number. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or the longevity products or skin health or our truth treatment products or a success story, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to uh, Mark and Serena, I think you said, right? Are you there, yeah. Serena? Serena? Yeah. Hey, Hi. how you doing? Hi there. Good morning. So uh, your dad says you get headaches, and I was asking him, are they related to your menstrual cycle at all? No, it's a sudden thing. Like, they just started a month ago, and they've been persistent for the past, like, month. Okay, long term. Okay, couple things. First of all, I was telling your dad that the uh, most likely cause of headaches is vascular. It has to do with your circulation. The two reasons why you get changes in circulation are hormones and food. Uh, however, there can be, if there's a, something in there, like there's pressure in there, that can cause headaches too. So I'm going to tell you some ideas, and if they don't work, you might want to have it checked out. Because if there's something f physical going on in there, or mechanical, I should say, uh, you're going to want to have that looked at. Not everything is biochemical and nutritional. But from a biochemical and nutritional standpoint, here's what you want to do. You want to see if you can link the headaches. Do they, is it one long headache that you have, or is it, do they, does it flare up? No, they'll just, like, I'll wake up in the morning with a headache, and it'll last till I go to bed. So, so in other words, you're he you have he a headache l the whole day? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, if you have a headache the whole, your whole, day, the whole day, then there's something going on in there that's it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with what you're doing. It's something that's in the head, and it's not vascular. Your blood, your chemistry is going to change. It's going to fluctuate. So if it's related to your chemistry, then it's going to fluctuate. However, I'm not sure that that's the case, that you're, not, that you're just not missing flare-ups. So what you want to do is you want to look for flare-ups because they're your friend. You follow me? You know what I mean when a flare-up, a spike? Yeah. You want to see if you can, you're just missing them. 
if if it is the case, if it's that you're absolutely sure after you ch you know you pay start paying really close attention to them that you just have one long term headache, then that's something mechanical. Pro that uh, uh, the the likelihood of something mechanical is much greater, and you want to have that looked at. But until that point, if I were you, I would be looking for flare ups because flare ups will will then allow you to associate your headaches to something you're doing, and that's in your interest. That way, you don't have to go to a doctor. You follow me? Yeah. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to start looking for flare-ups. If you, if you spend a few days and you don't notice any flare-ups, you just have this one chronic headache for, for every minute that you're awake, I would have that looked at personally. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. All right, good to talk to you. All right, let's go to, uh, let's go to Tracy in Ohio. Good morning, Tracy. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. What's going on? How can we help you? Calling for, I'm calling generally for a friend of mine that a actually has, um, she's, she's a diabetic, and um, she was wondering about what would she be able to take in order to keep those, um, to try to keep her blood sugar level <laughs> being as close to normal. She's been having some spikes in that, some problems in that, and um, just wanted to find out what I could recommend for her. Uh, lots of things you could recommend for. Number one, the most important thing with diabetes is to, uh, is to control food. That's the most important thing. And that means okay. avoiding foods that spike blood sugar. That, uh, there's a ton of supplements that will help, and you should definitely be on them. I'll tell you what those are in a minute. But for the most part, what, uh, what you want to do is you want to control the food she's eating. Now, it's not easy to just, you know, it's easy to say, but it's not necessarily easy to do. So uh, what you want to do is start using replacement foods. Foods that replace sugars and, and insulin spiking foods. Things like protein, protein powders. Longevity has a new product called the Keto FX that can help you. Uh, uh, seafood, meat, if you're doing meat, dairy, cheese, eggs, high protein foods. Especially protein foods that contain something called BCAAs and also an amino acid called arginine. BCAA stands for branched chain amino acids. They're found in whey, especially dairy meat, all the high protein foods, as well as the amino acid arginine. In fact, taking the amino acid arginine is a good idea, or for that matter, you can take BCAA supplements, both of which are available in health food stores. Same with the amino acid glutamine, very helpful for diabetes. Chromium and vanadium can also help you uh, process sugar and the mineral, ni or the uh, vitamin, I'm sorry, niacin, vitamin B3. Niacin is stupendously valuable and multifunctional, and I'm proud to say that Longevity and Dr. Wallach have come up with a new product called the Ultimate Niacin, which is a time-to-release niacin. Everybody with blood sugar issues should be using the Ultimate Niacin, in my opinion. The Ultimate Niacin is also important for brain health issues, blood pressure issues, skin, uh, skin issues. Niacin is helpful for folks dealing with acne. I have a new acne supplement coming out here uh, in the next three or four weeks that's going to have niacin in it. Uh, niacin is just wonderful, wonderful for a lot of things. Magnesium can also be helpful uh, for helping the body process sugar. Uh, uh, the amino acid taurine can be helpful. Alpha lipoic acid and vitamin E are also important. I would get her on the ultimate selenium. That's helpful, as well as sulfur, MSM sulfur, and, of course, the healthy star pack. That's the bottom line. you got so many options here, my dear. And she should notice results, and by results, I mean weight loss, drop in blood pressure, and, and appetite suppression within days or less, one day even, but certainly within days. Okay? Okay. Okay, okay take care. Good to talk to you. All right, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Uh, I don't know if Mark and Serena are still listening, but as I was as I was talking, uh, just talking here, I got to thinking, electrolytes might help you if you're still listening there, Serena. Electrolytes, and by electrolytes I mean beyond tangy tangerine, vegetable juices, and also uh, even squeezing lemons or citrus into water and just drinking it down. That can be a good source of electrolytes, veggies in general, and and fruits for that matter. Although fruits do have some sugar in there, that might be a problem. Veggies are, are a great source of electrolytes, and that. Can be help you, helpful for headaches if you have uh, an electrolyte deficiency long-term electrolyte deficiency that might help and I got to uh, I just dawned on me as I was talking to the last caller so sorry I didn't bring that up bring that up when uh, when you call all right let's go to Georgia and talk to Cheryl is that right did I say that right Cheryl yes hi, hi Cheryl how you doing how are you yeah hi. I get hold of you yesterday fine um, I have a friend, he called me in a panic and said, I want some of those vitamins you're on. Okay. He, he has diabetes. He said that he used to be a type 2. Now they've classified him as type, a type one. 1. Right. 
Is that That's what happens. Of course. Well, te not te not technically because type one's autoimmune and type two is a, a different cyst, a different type mechanism. But okay. type one, you don't make any insulin. Type two is your body stops listening to insulin. So when when the body completely stops listening to insulin as, as an end stage type two, in effect, it's like type one where you just don't have any insulin. Same idea. So they have to give you insulin is the bottom line. So that's at that point, he's he's in a world of hurt. So he's got to turn this thing around quickly because it's not yeah, it's tum it's going to tumble out of control. I know it is. I'm very worried about him. Um, I'm thinking about bringing him into my home and helping him and trying. How to old him. is he? But I, he is 64. Okay. And, and now he also, here's he he also had a heart attack. Okay. Well, I was about to say. Yeah, they put a pacemaker in because his heart rate was too fast. Okay, well now I'm just going to get depressed. I don't need to hear any more of the grim details. Here's the deal. Okay. The, he's a mess. Okay, I'm just going to call a spade a spade yeah. here. But here's the good news. You ready for the good news? This is the most yes, awesome not. thing. To me, this is the most awesome thing about nutrition. The sicker we are, the faster we turn it around. And he's sick, so he's going to turn this thing around fast. Immediately, get him on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You'll notice a, a dramatic difference just from that. Okay. 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 Uh, well. That alone will make a dramatic difference. Once he does that, he's going to want the rest. The rest will be the healthy start pack. The sweetie, mm -hmm. basically everything I just talked about with the last caller. Right. The sweeties. Right. I, I just, yeah, yeah. Okay, you you probably heard everything I said. Treat I, them I, like I, a. I, okay. The sweeties. How about the sweeties? The cardio sticks and niacin. What I put on. Niacin. Tr uh, have him use the Fucoid Z. He needs to go okay. to the health health food store and get a few things. Fifty milligrams of zinc picolinate. Four hundred IU of vitamin E. Uh, there's, there's, a, I'm not going to give you everything cause there's so many different things, but I'm going to give you a bunch. Uh, right. I would be, I would be also using, um, MSM sulfur, a thousand milligrams a day, alpha lipoic acid, 400 milligrams a day, uh, -huh. uh, uh magnesium. He'll get that in the osteo effects, but you might want to throw in a little bit more, maybe a thousand milligrams a day. Okay. The, the, uh, uh, BCAAs branch chain amino acids, as well as the amino acid arginine and glutamine, the two amino acids, okay. arginine and, glut and glutamine, both are available as powders, a couple of BCAA capsules a day, more protein and less sugar and bread and pasta and potatoes and rice and cereal right. and all the foods we love so much, but more yeah, protein I, I, and, and spicy f and get them, get them on spices. Spices will also help take care of the sweet tooth, especially cinnamon. We, okay. Do you want to say anything else? Because we're running out of time. We're just well, out of time. Okay. He also has kidney issues too. Well, it's That's all the same what? thing. It's all the okay. same thing. Okay. It's all the same thing. Um, kidney kidney issues follow messed up blood sugar because as the sugar builds up in the blood, it damages the kidneys. Hey, uh, Cheryl, you got to call back tomorrow. We're out of time. We've only got 30 thank seconds you. here. I appreciate okay. it. Oh, okay. Thanks so much. Bye Take bye. care. Okay. All right. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for listening. Please check out my True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. And of course, if you want to join The Bright Side, Ben team. Love to have you aboard for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a business and spread the word about the importance and power of a good nutritional supplement program and help change lives and make money at the same time. Call 866-735-2470 and they can tell you all about it. Have yourselves an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now. Registered Pharmacist